guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. Welcome back to another episode. We have a super special episode in store for our Audi fans today. Today, we're at Iros Motorsports. We're here visiting Hank Iros. We're here at SEMA, and of course, we had to pay a visit to Hank. He's like 20 minutes away from the show. He's been telling me about this car for about a couple of years. It's his 1981 Audi Quattro. This thing makes north of 900 wheel horsepower and is probably one of the most analog Audi experiences you can get. This is an absolute dream feature, dream car of mine for many, many years. I'm so freaking stoked. We're going to learn all about the Audi. We're going to go for a spin, see what this thing's all about. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. Let's get into it. Hank, my man. What's up? So man, good. We've been talking about so this good for to a see while, you, man. Huh? I know. It's been a couple of years now. Yeah. It's been a couple of years. You, you, you teased me with some photos and some videos of this thing. Yes. I think at like TX2K a couple of years ago. And uh, we've been dying to get out here. We finally made it happen. Let's we go. finally made it happen. And I'm I'm so freaking excited, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh this is a unicorn for the TRC team because we've never featured one on the channel. And collectively, as a group, all our guys here, this is like one of our favorite cars of all time. So I vaguely remember this, so like when I told you about this at Texas 2K, it's probably been what, three or four years that like you guys are playing like Forza and the Quattro is like the coveted car or something like that in that game. Yep, yep. Gran Turismo. I mean, all the games, dude. Like this is this is it. This is the, the one, you know? Yeah, no, so this car is like a car that I grew up watching in the, like the group B days, like right when I was becoming a little kid, seven, eight years old. Like I remember this car as a young kid. It's a, such a fun and satisfying cars to own. Like the people that stop you at gas stations are the guys that are like my age, 40, 45, and they remember this this thing just revolutionizing both motorsport and just rally. But yeah, this is the OG. This is the godfather of all wheel drive. This is like the, the OG Evo, the OG STI. Like this is what everybody kind of modeled their program after because Audi brought this one. And what's special this one is it's an 81. That's the first year of the Quattro. They only sold them in Europe. This one's gray market, came over on a boat, some guy just had to have it in his collection. Yeah, I'm the second owner of it, so I'm pretty pumped to have it in my in my collection, and it's a really satisfying car to own. Pop the hood for us, yeah, man. Because this isn't just a regular collector's, you know, Quattro. <laughs> no, I, I like to tinker with stuff, so. Um, I mean, just look at this thing, dude. Yeah, so like the original Quattro's, like everybody always looks at this radiator and they're like, what is that? Is it an intercooler? No, like the Audis, you got the whole transmission, it's all wheel drive and they just, they had to stick everything in front of the, the longitudinal transmission. So you just get this super long engine and on the original engine, you were belt driven. So you had another bit here, a pulley. So there's no room for the radiator. You kind of had to shove those things on the side, just like this. So this isn't the original engine. The original engine was like 160 horsepower 10 valve. I've done the unthinkable and swapped in a modern engine. So it's like a resto mod. It'd be like putting a modern Hemi in an old charger. Uh, this is kind of like the TTRS derived cast iron block. The big old EFR on it makes like 900 wheel. <laughs> Pretty light, right? Like they are. Yeah, just it's an old car. It's um, this car's probably around like 2,900 pounds. It's crazy. Like on the dyno, if you're if you're on the dyno and you're doing a pull, like you can't open the doors because like the chassis is just twisting so much. It's like <laughs> nope, not opening the door. So it's. It probably doesn't need 900 horsepower, but it's pretty fun with 900 horsepower. It needs, in TRC terms, it needs 900. It needs 900 <laughs> wheel, yeah, it definitely does. This is definitely right up our alley, dude. What's, uh, I guess, like, what's the rundown on, like, the engine setup? I know you, I guess you built this. It's, none of this is, like, the latest and greatest, right? I guess it's... No, it's a very basic engine. It's the block out of uh, just a 2.5 TFSI TTRS, so, like, era 2009 in Europe to about 13. And then it's got an 07K head out of like a Jetta and then it's got just some big cams in it and then 
You know, these, these engines are normally flipped 90 degrees and are transverse. And so that meant that we had to make our own motor mounts, we had to make our own oil pan, we had to do obviously intake and exhaust manifolds. Like you're seeing something that when we were super bored in 2014, 15 before we blew up and started doing the RS3s, like this was something just to keep our CNC machines busy and like show what we were capable of doing, right? Um, so it hasn't really changed much since then. Um, you know, as, as the new EFRs came around, we, we upgraded it a couple times, but. What, what size turbo is it? So this is a 91. 74 with like the big 145 hot side, so 1.45 AR. And then I've got one of those, uh, it's like QuickTime, they make that spool valve. It just basically shuts off one of the volutes until it gets on boost and it opens that one up. So you kind of get this cool spool that's full boost by 4,500, but then it still spins out to 9,000. It's kind of yeah. kind of a cool little motor. So you're revving, you're revving the thing out to not, about nine grain? Uh, 8,800, it'll, we'll probably bounce it on nine a couple of times here and there. <laughs> Nice, dude. Uh, what do you guys do? Is it just like factory all-wheel drive system, transmission? So this is a transmission out of the B5, B6, S4s, uh, or RS4. So it's got a little shorter ratios, like on the 3.4, but basically just a Torsen center differential out of like a, a B5 RS4. And then the rear end is just got a wave track in the rear end. Pretty stock axles, they put up with it. You just gotta remember. <laughs> yeah, you gotta remember the 80s, like they didn't know anything about like how much you needed to beef up stuff like that. So everything's just overbuilt, like the good old days when things just lasted. 2JZ is kind of like the same concept. Yeah, 100%, dude. Well, why don't you fire this thing up for us? Okay, let's get it. Cause I'm dying to hear this thing. Good old five cylinder magic right there, baby. Nick, what do you think about this thing, dude? Perfect. <laughs> perfect. How many times have we played this on the on the racing sim? Most of the time. <laughs> this thing's so good, brother. It's good. The 80s were good, weren't they? This thing is so good. I can't wait to ride this thing, man. This is probably, I would imagine, probably one of the more analog experiences you can get in an Audi, you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's um yeah, I mean, it's an old car, like super rudimentary. These actually have like the same subframe on the front and the rear, they just flip them around. <laughs> so it's like, they just needed an all wheel drive car and they're like, looked at the parts, man, they're like, hey, we can just flip the subframe around. We'll turn like the same suspension on the rear as we do on the front. Hell yeah, dude. It's like nothing super fancy, but that's all you needed back then to have an edge. You just needed all four wheels spin. And it's, it's wild that it took anybody that long to like bring that into motorsport, but. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Here we are, man. Box flares always work. It doesn't matter if it's an E30, Skyline, it doesn't matter. You got box flares, you're in business. Exactly. Well, dude, why don't we uh, take this thing for a spin? All right, let's rip it. Yeah, All right, guys, we're going for a spin. Yes, sir. And Hank's Audi. <laughs> I'm so excited, dude. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. It's like I was mentioning earlier, like, I don't drive this thing very often. I even sometimes thinking about selling it, and then I drive it, and I'm like, I can't get, I can't get rid of this. I gotta keep this thing. You get the bug back every time, yeah, huh? It is. <laughs> well, this thing, for the most part, it's you can tell it was, you know, made in the '80s. Yeah, very simple. Um, this car actually was a, a no factory AC car, so it didn't come with AC. It just didn't have it. Uh, you couldn't retrofit it if you wanted to. You know, the only thing you have is like, if you wanted the sunroof, you gotta just manually crank it. <laughs> And could have backed down, that's about it. There you go, man. Thousand. I oh, forgot about. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing good. beats that sound, dude. Yeah, that's good. Oh man, dude, and I just like vividly remember watching videos when I was a kid of like groupie, like them just bombing through like Monte Carlo, like with a big five cylinder, just Bro. railing at red line. Yes, dude. This car just like works. It's fun. It's so good. It's just like a straight pipe. Yeah, yeah, no muffler. Like all the rally cars had like the exhaust out the center like that. Yeah. So I kind of just replicated that on the car. We might get a one, two, three. Let's see if we get a one, two, three we'll, on the way back. is 
so sick. <laughs> dude, this thing f***ing parties, bro. This thing f***ing parties, dude. Oh my god, you're thrashing this thing, bro. <laughs> That's what cars are for, right? We always have the most fun with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun together. I don't think we've ever filmed anything where it wasn't a ton of fun. Oh my god, dude. I wonder what these guys think. Pull up to them, see what they think. <laughs> that had to be unbelievably amazing sounds for them on this flyby right here. How was that? How was that, boys? Awesome. <laughs> Sounds good at 9,000, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What's the, what do you tune this on? So this is on Vems. Yeah, I've, ne um, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's it's a ECU that was pretty dang popular in like the 2000s, like late 2000s. Um, I bought a Cyvex for it. I'll probably put it on Cyvex here in the next couple of... Now we're talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty motivated after hanging out with you all day. <laughs> this thing's awesome. We have that effect. Yeah. Now you're going to want more horsepower and put TLC into it after you see all the beautiful shots and everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really raw. It's... You know, I've, especially because when I built this, I was, you know, a 20 year old. So it's like, oh, I got to put solid bushings in the subframe. I've got to have super stiff I mean, spring rates. This thing's raw. It's, yeah. it's, it's visceral, you know, like it's just, <laughs> this is a very, very special car, man. Yeah, it's super fun. It's, um, I've driven this car quite a bit too. Like when I was in college, this was my daily. Like I've taken this thing to Pikes Peak before. So all the way out to Colorado or the Rockies. Um, my first kid came home from the hospital in this. Wow, so very special car to you. Yeah, it's got a lot of good memories, man. Yeah. Like this is what this is what started Iros Motorsport. Like without this car, there wouldn't, you know, in my opinion, there, the RS3 platform wouldn't be nearly as, as far along as it is. Yeah, it's uh, this made it to where we wanted to play with five cylinders in the new car for sure. Yeah, so like back in the heyday, this was like, you'd have cars lined up here, pretty much the whole track, all these businesses would get um, you know, all the parking would be filled. In fact, one of these came up for lease one, like 10, 12 years ago, and I was like so tempted to get like the corner spot next to Cisco. <laughs> you go to the drag strips like right in front of your place. But like, dude, I've seen like domestics pull tire that down here. You know, so this was the OG street race this spot. This was the spot. I bet you like 90% of Vegas street racing went down on this road. And then, you That's know, just, wild. just warehousing came in and caught, or um, they, they put a gas line down the middle lane and that kind of, it, it messed up the center lane. And then yeah. they, they tried to like redo that lane, but it was never the same. Never the, 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 same. the right lane was always way better. And then they, they found a new spot, but yeah. Cisco was the, anybody that was, was in the scene in, in SoCal, Las Vegas, they, you say Cisco and they know, they know. up. <laughs> yeah, We've probably seen videos here. Yeah, absolutely. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see if that. we can pl plug some old videos here. Yeah, yeah. You know? We'll find some good stuff. Of Hell yeah. The, the two Bosco um, Evos and stuff running down here. A lot of good memories. Heck yeah, dude. Um, well, I guess we can. You want to go back? Yeah. This thing f***ing boogies, dude. Dude, my man, honestly. Dude. I can't thank you enough, bro. Every time, man. I'm so freaking stoked that we <laughs> finally made it happen. A couple years in the making, and it was worth the wait. Yeah, dude, I'm glad you came out. Thanks for tracking me down and getting, getting a hold of me, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming out and sitting down with me. It's fun. Yeah, it fun. man. This is, a, this is a freaking blast, man. So it was, uh, so now we've had a little taste of the old school stuff, right? Like, yeah. This is uh, about as analog, visceral, like raw experience you get. Audi, almost a thousand horsepower in this thing. What do you say we try out some of the new stuff? Yeah, let's see if it got any better in, in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> let's do this. All right guys, going for a rip in the new school RS3. So it's a 2023 RS3? Yeah, yeah. It makes what, 750? So right now it's on a different turbo. So we're probably only on about like 600 right now. Um, but I typically, we had to do some stock ECU tuning on it, so I had to go back to some more stock hardware on it, but for what we're doing today, that's gonna be plenty. Thank you. It's super fun. <laughs> a little bit of a smoother ride than the, than the Quattro. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a little bit of an interior change. So this thing has 12,000 miles, I think you said, and you've been through seven sets of tires? Yeah, this thing, it, it gets used. <laughs> it's uh, this poor thing.
<laughs> this thing is insane. <laughs> it does it so effortlessly. Dude, this is wild. The technology for for that man, like, so it's full real wheel drive or no? It's actually still it's it's still just a drift mode. So like, if you understand it, what's going on? It's got a clutch pack on each rear axle, okay, and then it's got no center differential. So the clutches are acting like the center and the rear. So like when you come into a turn, what it's doing is it's locking up the the outside tire and opening up the inside and then grabbing the ABS to get it to start the slide. And then once it's in the slide, then it just locks up the rear. Yeah. So then it's like a lock center, lock rear, right? That was gangster. <laughs> Look, we're well, off episode of Luna again. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it, dude. <laughs> dude, <laughs> that was f***ing sick, dude. <laughs> dude. All right, we should probably get out of this park. Yeah, <laughs> it's about that time. <laughs> it's about that time. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up today's episode. We had an absolute blast with Hank and the guys at Iros Motorsports. We can't thank them enough. This was an incredible experience getting to ride in the Quattro. I think there's only like 400 of these things, so it's definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did. We'll catch you in the next one.